the chips that are in pure water gain mass, they are gaining length and girth, and they are becoming far more flaccid. <laughs> While all this is cooking, let's make an explanation of what's actually going on. This parsley plant is looking reasonably healthy. It's quite firm. We would call it turgid. The cells are turgid. It's quite so sort of stiff. Whereas this one is looking decidedly sad and droopy and we would call this one wilted and I can get this one to recover quite happily by sticking it in some water. What's going on inside the cell? Well if we imagine the cell to be one of these Ziploc plastic bags in a wilted plant, the vacuole, which is basically what we're looking at here in this sort of model of this plant, has got some water in it. So I've got some water in there and I'll get most of the air out. So I filled up this plastic bag with some water in it and it's by no means full and the bag is all soft. It's not stiff in any way and this represents the state of the cells in this plant. In humans they're held together upright by a skeleton. Plants, well they don't have a skeleton, you look inside, you can't find one. They're held upright by the amount of water they have. And here in these cells, they haven't got enough water. And so the cell is all flaccid, wobbly. Let's put some more water in this bag. And what I'm going to try and do is nearly fill up this bag with water. So this represents the plant with the maximum amount of water it can have in it. Not quite enough yet. As you see the bag is still quite wobbly. So let's fill it up with a little bit more. getting close to the point where I'm not going to be able to put too much more water in. And now here the bag is quite stiff. It's not quite as stiff as I can make it. I've still got a little bit more air in here. Let's risk putting a little bit more in. And this bag is now becoming quite stiff. And this represents the state of these cells which are turgid.
Now, how do we get water into a plant? Well, it's obviously got something to do with the salt or sugar to try and do this. And we have in this potato a model of what we call a partially permeable membrane and this I'm representing by a dotted line. We'll have a look inside the chip and we'll look at outside. Outside I've got these little dots which represent molecules of water. Inside I've got these little dots and we've also got molecules of our salt solution. Now this is too big to go through the partially permeable membrane so the salt can't travel but the water molecules can travel through. They can travel inside to out and outside to in but this is outside a weak solution and inside we've got a strong solution. So the water is trying to balance to get an even solution. So it's the same strength inside and outside. So more water will move in than will move out. And so this cell with its vacuole, so if I draw a, a cell it's got a cell wall which will keep its sort of shape and we've got the vacuole. Water will start to pour in and be stored in this vacuole. This vacuole will fill up and it will push then against the surface of this cell wall and it will make it stiff or turgid. If instead of this system we have the converse, so I've got my semi-permeable membrane, holes are a little bit big there, and I've got a strong solution outside and a weak solution inside. I'll now put all the water in. So this again is the chip and this outside. Then to balance what we're going to need is to try and make this strong solution compared with the cell weaker. So the water molecules here inside the cell will move out. This will take the water out from the vacuole. I better draw the cell wall in. This vacuole will now be not as stiff. There's a lack of water in there. So there is not as much pressure pushing on this wall as the pressure on the outside pushing in. The wall is therefore not as stiff. And the cell becomes flaccid. And in an extreme case, virtually all the water leaves this and we say the cell has become plasmalized and the cells in basically in a state of near death and only if we throw lots of water at it will it probably recover. What do I do with this poor little thing? It's looking decidedly sad the soil is actually 
dry on it and if we want to try and perk this one up then what we need to do is to put it in some water for a while this is my other one and I do put it back in a beaker of water just to keep it sort of as turgid as possible some of the water will remove out of there and if we take this one and we now put this into some water over a period of the next few hours this will start to perk up and it will become turgid again so I'm just going to leave this one on the side so we can see what happens to it osmosis then is the movement of water water moves from a weak solution to a strong solution this is the opposite way to we think of diffusion diffusion is moving a strong to weak whereas osmosis is just the movement of water and if we think of it as concentrations then concentrations of water moving from a concentration of just pure water which would we'll regard that as weak to a solution of high concentration of salt which we'll describe as a strong solution so water will cross this semi-permeable membrane 